could you possibly know that? Because she told me while I was taking the headache powers. But she was quite talkative. I see. Don't you dare say I see it. That's a pair of toe. I asked for water. She gave me some. And while I drank it, she told me she had just recently moved in and hadn't had a chance to put her own name on the bell push. Then why did I hear a man's voice when I listened at the door? You listen! <laughs> <laughs> Mavis, I was not suspicious, merely curious, and I did hear a man's voice in the flat. And that was the radio, you silly fool. Little old ladies often keep the radio on day and night for companionship. And I heard a champagne cold pop. That was the little old lady's knee. <laughs> <laughs> she has arthritis. It pops all the time. I only heard it pop once. She only flexed it once. <laughs> and I heard you laughing. Naturally, she looked quite silly when she popped her knee. <laughs> and Roomba music? She put on a recording. She does the rubber to exercise her stiff knee. Then why didn't it pop again? Because it's a therapy. It's working, of course. <laughs> and I distinctively heard your voice say, darling. She was a darling old lady. And you laughed again. Uh, her rubber was ludicrous. And the clank of glasses? I was finished with my water. <laughs> and then you gave eight. Whoop of Leo. Edgar, I never whoop. That was the old lady's schnauzer. I had trodden upon the poor creature's tail. That's all. I say, my darling, is this true? But of course it is, my dear. What of it did you think was the truth? I hardly dare tell you. I am so overcome with remorse for to ever doubted you for a moment. Nonsense, my dear. Anyone would have imagined things under the circumstances. Yes, my darling, can you ever forgive me? But of course, my dear. I'm so sorry to have worried you. What an unpleasant evening you must have spent. I've been a colorful. Now, now. But the how? No, no. I do so love you. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't love you. Neither. But, my darling, I shall have to telephone my solicitor at once. Sir Charles Rumley, whatever for? When I returned home here, I was so upset, so seedy with rage for the things that I had imagined you had done. I was going to... Edgar, it is. what are you trying to tell me? Uh, darling, I have done a great thing. What? I telephoned Sir Charles and told him that I intended to change the terms of my will. You did what? Uh, now, you needn't fret, my dearest. I, I only told him that. I never said a word against you. I, I never even indicated in the slightest alteration because I merely stated that I wished to change it, but gave no specifics. Well, that is a relief, I suppose. I shouldn't like Sir Charles to ever think that I would. Well, to know that you thought that I would. Well, you know. I will disabuse him of the notion at once before he ever wonders why I. What's your up? I forgot. He was going out when I rang him up, and he won't be home for hours. Don't worry about it, darling. There'll be time enough in the morning. And a short drink and let's go to bed. Of course, at once. Uh, darling, something crossed my mind. <coughs> yes? You say that you drove to the church to find out there was to be no meeting after all. Started driving home. Had this headache. Stopped the car in Sudbury Lane. Went up to the second floor flat. You borrowed a glass of water took headache powders, came down, and drove straight away home. Yes, yes, that's it exactly. That's what I did, precisely. And there's something about your story that is decidedly odd. Odd? Odd. And what's so bloody odd about it? Mavis, I do wish you wouldn't use that sort of language. I'll use whatever bleeding language I bloody want to. Now get to the point. Well, I was merely wondering, mind you, is how is it that your car was parked facing toward the church? And not away from it. What are you getting at? Well, it looks awfully as though you parked it on your way to church and not from, which means you were never near the church at all. Don't be ridiculous. Of course I was. I just got things mixed up in my mind, got events out of order, that's all. Headache first, then church. Did you speak to the Reverend Smithers? No. Actually, I spoke to no one. When I saw the church was dark, naturally I assumed the meeting had been cancelled. So I came straight home. Strange. And what's so bloody strange? The church was not dark, my dear. 
They were having an evening prayer service, and that's why the meeting was cancelled. Or so Smithers said. It's a lie! Who are you going to believe? Your <laughs> own wife and that snivelling minister? <laughs> <laughs> Shall I call him and ask? Don't you touch that. <laughs> Mavis, that pistol. I suppose you're wondering why I'm pointing it at you. Oh, well, yes, that, but more, I was wondering, where did you get it? I've had it the whole time. You simply didn't notice. A pistol that size? I hardly believe it. Oh, you never notice anything! No, you don't! <laughs> Mavis, you... You wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? No, you wouldn't. Would? Would it? Would? Oh, very well. <laughs> Have it your own way. But why? You blasted fool. You really mean to tell me you don't know. Mean to tell you? I do tell you. I don't... Mavis, why would you shoot me? Are you blind or just incorrigibly stupid? Well, those are the only choices I have. <laughs> Hardly sport. Oh, very well, you simpleton. I'll tell you. I suppose I owe you that much. I hate you. Always have hated you. Every moment of our life together has been a nightmare to me. I can't bear your arms about me, your lips upon mine, the touch of your hand. Our wedded life has been the most horrid experience of my lifetime. And I won't put up with another minute. Not another minute. Do you hear me? But darling, we were only married this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care. It's already too much. A moment. Just a single moment. What is it? May I finish my drink? But I suppose so. in your face and then knock you cold before you recover from the surprise. Edgar, you dunce. That trick only works if the other party is standing beside you. By Jove, I never thought of that. I say, may I have another go away? Oh, okay. <laughs> no. You can't blame a chap for trying. No, I suppose not. Well, I suppose there's nothing for it then. Chiro. Chiro. Oh! <laughs> You're not dead! Sorry, no. It's just a flash wood, but I say that's smart like blazes. <laughs> Oh well, there's more where that came from. Oh! <laughs> My dear, I am sorry. That must feel simply dreadful. <laughs> Perhaps you spin a wee bit closer. Perhaps I do that. Oh, that got it. Oh, that got it. Oh, damn it. Blast! Good morning, sir. <laughs> <laughs> My name is 
I believe Mrs. Hollister is expecting me. Are you sure, sir? The missus didn't say anything to me about a Mr. Crab. She wouldn't know me by name, but she is expecting me. My car. Oh, it's Inspector Crandall. Oh, yes, sir, she is expecting you. She's been ever so upset ever since the master didn't come home last night. Please, come and have a chair, and I'll tell the missus you're here. Uh, can I get you anything, a, a cup of tea? Uh, nothing, thank you, miss. Uh, Malloy, Lottie Malloy, and it's missus. I've been the Hollister's housekeeper for over 30 years. Then perhaps you can tell me, is it usual for Mr. Hollister to absent himself from home without warning? Oh, no, sir. Never, sir. If he, he was never one to worry <coughs> folks. If he wasn't going to come home, he'd say so. I only hope he hasn't had an accident. Just where was he going last night? Well, I'm sure I don't know. He never said a word to me, he did. Uh, he was still here when I went to bed. Ah, then you live on the premises, Lloyd. Yes, sir, I have a bedroom just off the kitchen in the back. And you didn't hear him go out? No, sir, or hear Mrs. Hollister come in either. Mrs. Hollister was out last night. Oh, yes, sir, I thought you knew. No, no, I did. Of course, she may have said so. When she rang up the station and it simply got left out of the report. Yes, sir, I'm sure that's probably what happened. Is that Mrs. Hollister? Oh, no, sir. Well, at least not the one that rang out the police. That's the first Mrs. Hollister. Master Edgar brought her here to Vinewood Cottage as a bride 24 years ago. She died, poor soul, nearly five years ago, just after Miss Susan went off to America. Miss Susan? Master Edgar's only child. A daughter, I presume. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Why did she go to America? Well, you see, her mother, that's the first Mrs. Hollister, was an American, and she wanted Susan to attend the same university that she went to when she, before she married Master Edgar. Miss Susan graduated just last month. Oh, it's a shame her dear mother wasn't here to see it. Of course, if she'd been here, she wouldn't have seen it since it happened over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. But you said last month, and she's not come yet? No, sir. Uh, but I suppose she's expected fairly shortly. Why do you suppose that, Lloyd? Well, because I heard them arguing about it on afternoon tea yesterday. Argue. Well, perhaps I put in that too strongly. Let's just say it was a difference of opinion. About what? About Miss Susan coming to live here when she returned to England. Miss Templeton, I'm sorry, I'm still not used to her being married to the master. Mrs. Hollister was quite put out when she learned that Master Edgar expected his child from his first marriage to live under their roof. Ask me. Ask you what, Roy? Oh, uh, excuse me, sir, but I believe I hear that Mrs. is coming now. Mrs. Hollister. Yes? I have Inspector Crandall at the Harrogate Police. Inspector? I thought they'd simply send her a constable. They would order Natalie, but you see, your husband is a rather important man. Or was. Lottie. Well, it's not like the master to stay away like this. I'm sure something awful has happened to him. Nonsense. He's probably staying away for a joke. A joke, you say? Edgar is a terrible tease. Then why did you summon the police? Yes, why? Well, of course, it may not be a joke. Of course it isn't. Yet you say he is a terrible tease. He is. No, he isn't. Is? Isn't. This is Malloy, really, now. Come now, which is it? Was he a tease or not? He was. Why do you say what? Why did you say was? I did it. I did so. I did it. Did? Mrs. Malloy, really now. Well, he wasn't a tease. Was it? Is it? You said was it. Did it. Didn't. <laughs> did it. Uh, which is it? Which is. Which was. Which is it? Which was what? What you said? When? Earlier. I'm so glad we finally cleared that up. <laughs> I do so like to keep matters clear, don't 
you? Quite. Um, if you don't need me any further, Mrs. Lottie, you may go. Excuse me, I have a few questions for Mrs. Malloy. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Not you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Do continue, Inspector. Let me see. Where were we? When? A uh, moment ago. <laughs> well, I was standing on the stairs. Not so. physically. <laughs> Conversational. I'm not sure. Why don't we start over? Splendid <laughs> idea. Yes, indeed. Inspector, why don't you start? Uh, Mrs. Malloy, if you don't mind, I will give you orders. <clears throat> Inspector, why don't you start? <laughs> Thank you. Now, Mrs. Hollister, when did you first notice your husband was missing? Just before I phoned the police. And when precisely was that? Just after I realized Edgar was missing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that agrees with the police report precisely. After all, Inspector, I have nothing to hide. <laughs> Lottie, you said you did not hear your master go out. No, sir, I did not. But that doesn't mean he didn't go out. No, no, of course it doesn't. Just state in the facts, Mrs. Yes, yes, of course you were. In any case, he must have gone out because he's not in. <laughs> you searched, of course, before bringing up the police station. Oh, yes, everywhere. Upstairs, downstairs, even the cellar. Why do you say even the cellar? Well, there's just something frightening about it, that's all. It's very dark and cold. And it's all damp and walled in with field stone. And all of those corks floating there like rows of staring eyes. <laughs> Corks? My husband has an extensive wine storage area in the cellar. A large rack of shelves running from wall to wall right beneath where we're sitting. Might I see this cellar? Oh, yes, of course. But would you mind if Lottie showed you the way? I don't like it down there. As you prefer. Lottie? Yes, sir, it's this way. Oh, perhaps it's Master Edgar. It can't be. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he ring up? Why wouldn't he just come home? Impossible. Why do you say that? <laughs> because I have a car. He didn't have a car. Well, how odd. Odd? If you had the car and your husband is missing, how did he leave? Yes, how did he leave? He might have gone on foot. And then his age, in the night air, yeah. on foot. It does seem unlikely to be faster. Edgar was an unlikely person. Isn't anybody going to answer that? You're closest. Oh, Mrs. Malloy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. Hello. I'm sorry. He doesn't seem to be in. Would anyone else do? I, oh, just a visitor here. Would you care to speak with Mrs. Hollister? Oh, really? Why not? I see. Yes. That's an extremely interesting, Sir John. And what exactly were the terms of the new will? New will? New will? Oh, he did it. But isn't that a bit odd? I mean, calling you up in the middle of the night and then... Of course, I understand from his wife that he was a bit of a teeth. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, thank you all. Yes, yes, yes. I realize that the solicitor should not reveal intimate details about his client. But don't you worry about it, Sir Charles. I am an inspector of police, so everything you blurted out will be kept in the strictest confidence. <laughs> yes, not a word from anybody. I promise. Uh, well, what did he say? Well, Sir Charles said that your master rang him up last night and said that he... Inspector, you just promised to keep that call in confidence. How can you deceive Sir Charles this way? Oh, I never see Sir Charles, Mrs. Hollister. But you see, I can't be certain the caller was Sir Charles. The caller may have been an imposter. I think that's perfectly rotten of you. The caller believed you when you said you were a policeman. <laughs> of course. I am a policeman. <laughs> this is madness, madness. Never mind her, Inspector. What did Sir Charles say? Your master rang him up and 
and said that he was going to change his will. Oh, and in whose favor? Well, of course, Sir Charles had no idea. So, the old will stands as is. But, Edgar Halston did have an appointment with Sir Charles this morning. And when he didn't keep it, Sir Charles naturally rang up to find out why. By the way, Mrs. Halston, Sir Charles says that your husband is not a bit of a tease. If that was Sir Charles. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, that's true enough. And even if it were he, his opinion is no more than just that. After all, a husband is far more likely to be a tease to his wife than his family solicitor. You know, I hate to admit it, but that makes a lot of sense, Inspector. Yes, I'm afraid it does. Buddy, oh well, but back to the business at hand. Would you kindly point me the way to the cellar? Oh, yes, sir. It's this way. <laughs> <laughs> I see that you're a bit of a tease yourself there, Lottie. Well, you can't be spit in polish. Every single moment, I always say. Well, when have you ever said that? You've never said that in your life. That's all you know. Now, now, lady, lady. <laughs> Just calm down. Oh. Wow, we have a call. Maybe it's the master. Nonsense. Uh, Why do you say nonsense, Mrs. Hollister? Edgar had a latch key. There would be no need for him to ring the bell. Oh, I hate to admit it. But that makes a lot of sense, Inspector. <laughs> Didn't you just say that? Well, it's a handy phrase. Can't I use it more than once? <laughs> Who can that be? Who can that be? Well, let's find out. Constable Howard, isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. Abel Howard, the heavy constable. That's who I am, all right. Oh, that's it all. Didn't they tell you that I was handling this investigation? Oh, yes, sir, that they did. He said you were here on a routine missing person case. My husband is not a routine missing person. I'm begging your pardon, ma'am, but that's not what the expression means. Never mind that, Constable. The point is, I am here, so you needn't be. But that's where you're wrong, Inspector. What? An inspector of police? Wrong. Right? Oh, make up your mind, young man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Constable, explain yourself. Well, you see, sir, it's like this. You are here because of the party who was lost. I am here because of the party who was found. Found? Found who? Found Edgar? I'm afraid not, ma'am, but I do believe we found you missing cat. Oh. <laughs> 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 you alike. Well, the name and address were taken from the caller, although animal tags can be pulled. Uh, let me just see. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, this is my cat. Fuzzy. <laughs> Uh, what happened to it? Motor car? Oh, I'm afraid more than that, ma'am. It seems your cat went with foul play. Oh, no. How so? Well, routine inspection of the animal led to the interesting <laughs> discovery of the poor fish in a drinking cup. <laughs> What's so interesting about that? Yes, lots of cats like cocoa. The cocoa was adulterated with a large dollop of potassium cyanide. What? You mean. Murder? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yes, Constable, are you quite sure? Yes. Who would want to murder a cat? Thank you, Mrs. Hollister. 
Well, there's no need for looking for cyanide in the washed up pan, I guess. I'm afraid not. So if you don't need me, sir, I'll be going. As a matter of fact, I could use a hand. I have to run off to run over to Sir Charles Rowley's office to check on the bequest of Edgar Holliston's will. Oh, must you? I mean, what's the point? It's not as though Edgar were dead or anything. He's just mysteriously absent. Hmm, that's true enough, of course. But still, I'd better know what's what in case he does turn up missing. Could save time later on. Well, whatever you think is best, Inspector. And while I'm gone, Constable, would you be so kind as to check on, or insert, or, excuse me, would you be so kind as to investigate the cellar in case Edgar Hollister is lying about the place? What? There is a cellar. Why would he lie about it? <laughs> I don't mean lying about it. I mean lying about in it. Whatever he's doing, I'll talk about him. And I am off to interrogate Sir Charles. And I'll go to the kitchen and uh, see about some luncheon. And I'll be a man with a beastly headache. <laughs> Cheer up! Cheer up! Cheer up!
Stephen Howard of the Harrogate Constabulary, who's been searching for your father. What? Really? <laughs> oh, I'm ever so sorry, Constable, but you do bear my father rather striking <laughs> Quite all right, Miss. After all, you've been away for five years. That's true, and I do have such a dreadful memory for faces, don't I, Barry? Why, huh. Barry, is something the matter? Susan, sweetie, would you mind very much letting go of the man? <laughs> oh, of course, how silly of me. I hope I haven't offended you, Constable. No, no, no Miss. These things happen all the time. <laughs> I said, do you suppose Miss Templeton knows where father's at? Well, the last letter I had from him, she and he were getting on just splendidly. And it had occurred to me that they might have gone off for a holiday. No, oh, I think you don't know, do you? Well, of course you don't. You you were on the boat. What and happened, Letty? Well, uh, Lottie. Lottie? <laughs> well, what happened? Well, Miss Susan, I, I don't know how to begin. Uh, your father's remarried. What? When? Uh, Friday, just two days ago. You mean the very day he vanished? Yes, sir. Married that morning, vanished that night. With or without the former Miss Templeton? Without. Then he can't be gone on his honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Now man is right. Unless he's a forgetful type. Does forgetfulness run in your family? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, but I say, Lottie, he'd only met this Miss Templeton when he wrote me two weeks ago. Wasn't this marriage a bit sudden? Uh, a bit too sudden, if you ask me. I just did ask you. <laughs> <laughs> just what is this? Oh, just a secret drawer. Father had them all over the place. And what do we have here, huh? Any of you recognize this? Why, that looks like Father's old target shooting pistol. Recently far, too, from this one, yes. I wonder. What is it, officer? Constable. Constable. From the back of these shells, this gun's been fired three times. Three? Shot? Fired? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it strike you as a peculiar coincidence? You mean a missing man? A hidden pistol. And three shots fired from it? No, no not, not particularly. particularly. <laughs> <laughs> well, here. I'm going to take this down to the lab and dust it for it. But it's bound to have fingerprints that father practiced all the time. Sweetheart, I think he means fingerprints besides your father's. But nobody ever handled that pistol except the master. Nobody. But if somebody did, it could mean. A fairy, hold me, hold me. But still, in all, if, if someone did fire this pistol the other night, I wonder why nobody heard any shots. Oh, I heard shots. What? <laughs> Touched it? Uh, why oughtn't I to have? Well, 
No, ma'am. You see, now your fingerprints are on it. I don't understand. Why shouldn't they be? Well, the case this was a weapon that was used to, well, if how foul play has been done, I mean, we don't know anything, but still in all, what's done is done. I'm going to take you down to the ballistics and have you check the shells. In case foul play has been done. Awfully sorry, Constable. Oh, don't be Mavis. After all, you couldn't have known. But I say, wouldn't it be funny if there had been foul play? You'd done it, and there'd be no way to tell your involvement because of you touching the pistol just now. More bicycles out back, if you'll excuse me. Certainly, certainly. Uh, Constable, did you find anything in the cellar? Well, yes and no, ma'am. I did find some a bit odd, but nothing smacks the criminals. You see, there's a brand new wine rack that runs from here over to here. And it quite walls off the cellar underneath the front part of this room right here. I try to get a peek behind it, but it's never a little tighter than the drum. You wouldn't happen to know what's behind it, would you, ma'am? No, I wouldn't. But perhaps Susan would. She has lived here most of her life. The front end of the cellar, you say? Nothing, to my knowledge. It was always damp there. The walls seem much water after a heavy rain, so far they simply sealed it off years and years ago. They would seem to explain it, Constable. Yes, yes, it would. Well, I'm off. Well, now, let's all sit down and get to know each other, shall we? Lottie, would you see us at lunch? Certainly, Mrs. Hart. Come now, you must tell me all about yourself. I dare say I should, I should show some concern over who is about to marry into our family. Oh, not much to tell. I'm just a word of the mill, handsome young American millionaire <laughs> who fell head over heels in love one moonlit night with your charming stepdaughter. Despite the fact that I know next nothing about her, or her family, or background, or anything, <laughs> but I'll just be plain hornswoggle to this old gal that had thrown me for a loop the moment she batted those pretty blue eyes my way. Millie, there. <laughs> Susan, would you get that, please? <laughs> Certainly, Mavis. <laughs> you British folks sure know how to make the Yankee feel welcome. I thought you'd be kind of cold and reserved. Oh, what a thing to say, Mr. Draper. Oh, please, call me Mary. Only if you'll call me Mavis. Inspector Prattle, don't tell me you're hard to work on a Sunday. Well, I know there's no calendar, Mrs. Hollister. But who have we here? I'm Susan Hollister, just back from America by steamship, during which voyage I met and became engaged to Barry Draper, the young man you see there on the sofa. Inspector? Mr. Draper? Miss Hollister? <laughs> <laughs> what other can the police inspector want of us? Then you don't know about your father. Oh, that, yes. But I thought Constable Howard was handling the case. Hardly. Constable Howard merely came here to return a missing cat. Are you sure about that? Constable Howard is just now off to the land with a target pistol found in a secret drawer. Or at least he's to do that in connection with the ants. Target pistol. In a sideboard. Secret drawer. Same place. <clears throat> but I'm forgetting my manners. Would you stay for lunch with us, Inspector? Sorry, but I don't eat when I am on duty. Well, how about a drink, then? Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey and soda? That would be kind of you. Um... <laughs> Let me see. Where was I? On duty. Mrs. Hollister? Thank you. Uh, let me see. Thank you. Um, I saw Sir Charles yesterday afternoon in regards to your, your husband's telephone call the night before. Sir Charles Romney, father solicitor. We say solicitor when we mean lawyer. Why? Why not? <laughs> in answer to your question, yes. Which question? When I said Sir Charles, did I mean Sir Charles Romney? Don't you know? I wasn't asking if that's what I meant. I was answering her question about <laughs> Which question she meant? Uh, did I? Did you what? Mean that question? I'm sure I don't know. Well, I assume she did. Then I probably did. Did what? Mean it. I'm glad that settled. <laughs> now, let me see. Where was I? At Sir Charles Romney's. Ah. And what did Sir Charles say? Sir Charles said, I think you'd all better sit down. 
What an odd thing for Sir Charles to say! <laughs> I did say that. Well, that's right, I heard him. In any event, let us sit down. <laughs> <laughs> now, <clears throat> what's all this about a target pistol? It was in the sideboard. In a secret drawer. And it happened fire. Fire? Three times! <laughs> <laughs> I say, can we be overheard in here? If you like. I don't think you meant that. Thank you. Oh, now let me tell you the terms of Edgar Hollister's will. Wait just a minute, Inspector. What has Edgar Hollister's will got to do with any of this? The target pistol, the three shots, the missing hat? It is my understanding that Edgar Hollister intended to have it altered. Maybe it's his cat! <laughs> Drastically altered terms. Even so, Inspector, I can't see of what importance the terms could be. Uh, I could provide a motive. A motive for what? For all we know, Edgar Hollister is alive and well. In any case, you might as well tell us the terms, since you've gone through all the trouble. Oh, yes, please do. Well, skipping over minor charities, bequests, social organizations, and servants. Minor, indeed. <laughs> 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 Edgar leaves his bride, Mavis Templeton Hollister, this house, the car, and an annual income of £1,000. The remainder of his estate, a not so inconsiderable fortune, goes to his only child, Susan Hollister. Oh, how darling a daddy! Yes, darling. <laughs> oh, but, uh, Inspector, what about the Inspector? Yes, Mrs. Hollister? If Susan should have die or anything, where would the money go? Well, in that event, of course, all the money will revert to you. I see. Of course, it was just a hypothetical question. <laughs> oh, I know that, dear ladies, and please don't worry about me. I'm very young and terribly healthy, so I'm certain I shan't die for years and years. Oh, I'm sure of it, darling. <laughs> and just to be sure. I shall watch over you like a mother hen every moment you're living here under my roof. Your roof? Just a figure of speech. After all, if anything has happened to Edgar, this will be my roof she's under. I guess that's true enough. I say, Mavis, do you mean to tell me that even though this house should become your own, you would allow me to continue to live on? Live on? Live on here! <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Susan, this is your home, where you, where you were born and raised. And here you shall live as long as I like. That is, as long as you like. <laughs> That's very kind of you, Mavis. Oh, I'll get it. There's no point in interrupting Lottie while she's preparing lunch. Hello? Oh, yes, just a moment. It's that young constable. He wishes to speak with you. Thank you. probably has a report on that pistol. Crandall here. What? But are you quite sure? Yes. Yes, I see. All right, Constable. Thank you. The strangest thing. What is it, Inspector? Did something odd turn up in ballistics or wherever he took that pistol? Not precisely. He never took the pistol to ballistics. But I'm certain that's what he intended to take it. And he had, but you see, he suddenly discovered that there was nothing that ballistics could test for him. I don't understand. That was the damnedest thing. I mean, after all, it was a target pistol, so I really don't understand it myself. Understand what, Inspector? The pistol was loaded with blank cartridges. <laughs> but that's impossible. Nonetheless, it's true. I guess we can rule out how I played by that pistol. Anyone who tried shooting Edgar with that would have a rather healthy victim on their hands when they were through. But the pistol loaded with blanks. <laughs> Certain until you've tasted it, darling. 
was kind of you to make tea on Lottie's afternoon off. Well, I thought that what did the two of us here quite alone. It might help pass the time. Now drink up. <laughs> it's so hard to just sit here, wandering, worrying. About what? Why, father, of course. Oh, yes, of course. I nearly forgotten. Forgotten father? What I mean, my dear, is that I'm so swept up in my own concern for him and his whereabouts that I quite forgot <laughs> that you guys would also be concerned. Yeah. Now drink up. Do you know, I was just wondering if father might not be in the cellar. Oh, what, what a silly notion. The cellar, indeed. Oh, if he were there, we would have found him. Oh, but you see, there's a secret room down there. I've only just now remembered it. You must be mistaken, my dear. Now hurry and drink your tea before it gets cold. But, Mavis, didn't father tell you about it? His various secret rooms and drawers and things were his particular pride and joy. I would have thought he would have shared that secret with the woman he married. Well, he may have said something or other about it. I've been so upset since his disappearance, I can't be expected to recall everything. No, no, dear Mavis, I quite understand. Still in all, I do think it might be worth a while to have just a little peep into the murder room. Where did you say? Oh, that was just father's little joke. We know how funny he is. Yes, <coughs> a barrel of laughs. He always used to josh about the secret room, so it would be a perfect spot to hide a body after murder. <laughs> so we simply came to refer to it as the murder room. Are you sure he said nothing to you about it? Well, he may have said something or other, something of the sort. Oh, yes, that room, just behind the wine rack, you mean. Yes, that's the one. I thought he might be hiding there, perhaps. He does so enjoy pulling one's leg. I dare say. But he simply can't be in that room. Constable Howard mentioned that the wine rack was solid. It seems to me that the secret room has been nailed shut. Oh, yes, it all comes back to me now. The panel behind the wine rack that used to lead into the secret room is nailed firmly shut. How strange. Do you think we should mention it to the police? No! I mean, it is nailed shut, so you can't have gone behind it. And, and why waste the policeman's time following false leads? That's true, I suppose. Besides, even if he were accidentally nailed in there, he would have pounded upon the back of the wine rack to be let out, I'm sure. After all, he would have suffocated in there by now. Even if you were perfectly healthy when he was first sealed in. <laughs> yes, even a healthy man was okay. <laughs> Oh, but father won't let that happen to him. I don't see what he could do about preventing it, my dear. Well, obviously, if he had been accidentally locked in there, he'd have become popping out of the other secret door. Other secret door? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? What other secret door? Well, after sort of the secret stairway, of course. No, he hadn't mentioned it, not a word. I had no idea there was another way out of that room. Oh, I'm so glad I could cheer you up this way. Cheer me up! Why, yes, I can see a mood is much more alive than when we first sat down to tea, so I can only assume it's some wonders for your spirits to know that if Father had been accidentally locked in there, he certainly out there now. Should I get that? No, no, I will. I can't imagine who would be calling on us at this time. Perhaps it's Father! I do wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? I'm a hollow in the Hagen place, ma'am. Oh, good. It's just the police. Good afternoon, Constable. <laughs> good afternoon, ma'am. Miss? Good afternoon, Constable. To one of the other is going to take a pleasure. Well, there have been a few new de developments in the case, Miss Hollis. I was wanting to discuss them with you. And not with me? Oh, I'm sorry. I was using the one that's plural since. With the bulk of you, naturally. Uh, won't you join us? We were just having tea. Thank you, Miss. Very kind of you, I'm sure. I do hate to miss my tea, but I figured with all this work, I'd have to pass the pie. Here, take this. I haven't touched you. No, come on! Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's cold. I can't serve you cold teas. I'll just go make some fresh. Oh, really? Maybe. Uh, there's no need, ma'am. <laughs> it's no trouble at all. I'll just be a moment. Yes, sir. Is your stepmother always just jittery, Miss? Oh, I'm sure not. And it's just worry about father. It would make anyone a bit jumpy. Do you know, I thought she'd faint when I suggested there might be father at the door just now. Is that a fact? She must be very anxious, mustn't she? Oh, I'm sure she's all talk about the secret room. <laughs> secret room, did you say? Oh, dear. I did promise her I wouldn't mention it to the police. Now, now, it's nothing like that. We simply didn't want you wasting time on a false trail. How do you know that? 
you know is false trail mix? Well, obviously, if Father had been actually nailed into the room behind the wine rack, he should be come popping out of the secret stairway. Room? Behind the wine rack? Secret stairway? Oh, please don't say anything to me, this. I did promise I wouldn't bother you with all this. Uh, no, 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 miss. But some other time, well, would you mind showing just me where the secret stairway is? If you like, but I don't... Shh, here she comes now. Not a word. We don't want to upset her. You're so understanding. Hello, Mavis. Back so soon. The water's just heating up for the tea. What are you two talking about? The weather. Uh, yes, the weather. What about the weather? Nice. Oh, ever so nice. How nice. <laughs> oh, but Constable, you said you had some news for us. Well, it probably means nothing, of course, but... Uh, oh, even so, I should like to hear it. Of course, Miss. Uh, well, it's about your father's disappearance. Well, naturally. What else would it be about? Well, I don't mean his disappearance specifically now. I mean the art of disappearing itself. If you follow it. I'm not sure I do. Well, you see, it's like this. In order for someone to disappear, they must be in a place. And then not be in a place. You see? <laughs> <laughs> see, our problem is if you've been off, well, how do you go off? But does it really matter that much? Well, possibly not, but I do wish, you know, gives us food for thought, you know, if you follow me. I'm not sure I understand. All right, let's say like this. Let's say he vanished. He has vanished. I know him, but I wish to present this as an hypothesis. Oh, very well. So, if he vanished, how do you go about vanishing? You see, there were no there were no trains out here that night. There's no record of the cab companies of your husband's description, and there's no record of a car coming by here before your own did that night. Can you be quite sure of that? Well, that's what law is. Sleeper and headlights in your car watching house are waking up. A uh, car could have come around earlier. It is July, the sun seldom sets before 8 o'clock or so. Well, in that case, Lonnie wouldn't have been big yet at all, you see. He, he might have gone on foot. Without anyone seeing him? Oh no, Mavis, I think not. Father's a rather well known personage hereabouts. Someone would have remembered. Yeah, but someone here would remember seeing him. But there you are, what did I tell you? Well, he wasn't walking. What was he doing? Well, he was cycling on a lady's bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Father, on a lady's bicycle? What's that for? Well, I'm afraid we're not certain of that yet, Miss, but it seems the report from three independent witnesses he was following a cat. But that's absurd. Why would Father follow a cat about? Well, we're not sure of that. And you don't suppose it was by cat he was following, do you? Ah, uh, that's very studious, Miss. What we did think, especially after finding your cat dead as cyanide poison, you know? <laughs> Maybe this cat poisoned? I'm afraid in all the excitement of your father's disappearance, I forgot to mention it. Quite understandable. Thank you. But in any case, we cleared up the means of father's disappearance. With no car, or train, or cab, he went off by bicycle. Well, the trouble with that theory is that the bicycle was found here, out back in the garage. You couldn't be sure it was the same bicycle. Three independent <laughs> witnesses tell. In every respect. In every one. <laughs> Golden handlebars, bright red hand grips, turquoise frames, orange fenders, green <laughs> fur seat cover, <laughs> bulky tail lights, a three tone belt, poke it out of chain guard, <laughs> and lemon colored nails. <laughs> there must be hundreds like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that's all I have for now, but I'll keep you advised of any further developments. 
I'm dreadfully sorry if I eat tea, Constable. I hope we may be back for the next time you join up. Susan, I don't think the Constable will be joining us for tea again. Oh, but surely he wouldn't hold dropping the silver service against you. What I mean, my dear, is that the constabulary does not often pop in socially to hop up with people in exclusive neighborhoods. Well, you said mother's right. It's, it is a bit unusual to take my meaning. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. That's what comes of receiving my high education in America. Pardon <laughs> <laughs> my mess up. What's happened to your friend, Mr. Draper? Barry? Yes. Oh, he was just seeing about taking a room at the hotel in town. I expect him to drop by any time now. But you are staying on here. Just you, alone with your stepmother. Is there anything wrong in that? And I'm not alone, not really. Not with Lottie here. Of course, she isn't here today. <clears throat> I see. Well, you must be very busy, Constable. So we'll let you be on your way. Oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> there is one more bit of information I forgot to give you. And what is that? Well, it seems one of the witnesses was the lady that lives in the first floor flat in that building of Sudbury Lane. She saw Mr. Hollis leaving and... And? Well, he did an odd thing. He did? An odd thing? How odd? What thing? Well, it seems that he removed the nameplate of the tenant from his position in the bell bush. He did what? He removed the nameplate and put it in his pocket. What an odd thing to do. We thought so, yes. Uh, did your witness happen to notice what sort of jacket he was wearing at the time? As a matter of fact, she did because it was so unusual. What was so unusual about it? Well, it was a rather expensive smoking jacket. Hardly the fame one wears on the trail of a fugitive cat at all. <laughs> it certainly doesn't sound like the sort of thing Father would do. No, it doesn't sound at all like Edgar, which makes me think that either your witness is an error or the man was not Edgar. No, it was Mr. Holster right enough. The witness is certain of that. She stepped out onto the foyer and watched him get upon his bicycle. She could clearly see his face beneath the street lamps. And the second floor flat on Sudbury Lane, what have you done about it? Why not? <coughs> what should we do? Didn't you even ask the thing you lived there? You think we should? No! I mean, I'm sure it would be of no help to you. Uh, you did say that the Edgar was seen leaving the place, so he obviously hadn't disappeared as yet, so I'm sure whoever lives there could be of no help to your investigation. Well, you know, come to think of it, I don't think you'd do any harm to look at the name of the tenant of the second floor flat. I mean, just in case. Just in case what? In case he said he was going, where are you going next? But you've already as good as said Edgar came straight back here. You did say the bicycle was in our garage. By Joe, you're right. I guess it'd be a waste of time to say the new was a Yes, it would. A terrible waste of time. <laughs> you really mustn't bother. Susan, would you please walk Constable Howard to his bicycle or whatever he came with, like a good little hostess? Certainly, Mavis. Whatever you like. Come, Constable. Good afternoon to you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Important. 
Mr. Draper, will you be staying with us a while? Didn't Susan tell you? Tell me what? Oh, do you know, it completely slipped my mind. That's my girl. But what has Susan forgotten to tell me? <laughs> the fairy and I are going to get married! What? When? Right this very afternoon. Isn't it delicious? By Reverend Smithers. Won't that be nice? <laughs> What's the license? The waiting period? The flowers? Oh, I greased a couple of palms here and there, and they waived all those requirements. It's all set. But you can't just be married just like that. Why not, Mavis? Because, because... Oh, if you're worrying about my inheritance, please don't. Barry asked Sir Charles about that, and apparently there's no problem whatsoever. If I marry, Barry shall become my heir if I should die. <laughs> <laughs> no, there wasn't that. Uh, then what was it, Mrs. Hollister? Edgar! Surely you don't want to get married without your father there to give you away. And even if you do, think of Edgar's feelings. He would be heartbroken to miss your wedding. Oh, gosh, I told you right. What could I have been thinking of? Yes, yeah, stupid of us, of course, we'll wait until Mr. Hollister is found. Good, good. But what if Gabby isn't found? We certainly can't wait indefinitely. Naturally not. Just a day or so. That should be time enough. <laughs> oh, very well. I'll just go on back to town and tell Reverend Smithers to hold off. It's only for a day, so, my darling, and I do so want Daddy there. I understand, sweetheart. Well, I'm off to town. <laughs> Perhaps that's for me. I told Sir Charles to phone if there were any problems he hadn't thought of. Oh, and perhaps Reverend Smithers can't have the church ready on time today, so perhaps it's him. <laughs> on the other hand... <laughs> It won't matter if he can't, since we're not going to be married this afternoon after all. That's true. <laughs> Still, in all, I do wonder who it could be. I suppose I answer it and see. <laughs> Hello? Who? Oh, no. Wrong number? No. <coughs> then who is it? It's... It's Edgar. <laughs> Oh, by all means do. Just wait 
is the secret stairway, miss? Right under that. You mean the window seat, miss? Yes, it opens up and there's a stairway just underneath it. And at the bottom of the stairway, there's a secret door that leads into the murder room. What did you say? Yes, it opens up and there's a stairway just underneath <laughs> it. I didn't make the argument, yes. I meant what you called it. Called what? The murder room. That's what I called it. Yes, I know. The question is what? Why what? Did you call it that? The murder room? Yes. Because that's what Daddy always called it. He thought it'd be a perfectly smashing spot to hide a body from detection if one had a body one did not wish detected, of course. Yes, perfectly comprehensible once you explain. What is it? Let's have a look at this thing. By the way, uh, no one's likely to pop up while I'm looking around, are they? Out of the window, see? Well, yes, yeah, of course, but I, I mean in this room. You see, I wouldn't want anybody to see me nosing about. Why are they not? Well, you see, I don't have a warrant or anything, and I might have a difficult time getting one until there's absolute proof of foul play. But you see, until there is, I, sh I should be you nosing about, you know, and but I really ought to be nosing about in order to get proof of foul play. But you see, I can't get a warrant until there is proof of foul play. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Is this thing nailed shut? Oh, Daddy made the lid immovable so that no one would find the secret stairway by inadvertence. Well, what's the use of a secret stairway with an immovable lid? If the lid were movable, the stairway wouldn't be secret. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, of course, but uh, how did you fall to use it? Oh, now I see what you're getting at. Well, of course, whenever Daddy wanted to use it, he moved the secret switch <coughs> along with the lid. It's one of the coat rack prongs. Well, which one is the secret switch, Miss? I bet you can't say that three times fast. <laughs> it's one of Barry's jokes. I don't get it. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, would you mind showing me how to operate the window seat lid? All right. First, you stand with your back here, uh, next to the umbrella stand, then, then, yeah, then you put your left foot behind the umbrella stand, like so, and then you grab hold of one of the coat rack prongs, like this one, okay. and then you pull down. Like this. I say it! <laughs> <laughs> what happened? It closed. I know, but <laughs> what? Well, Daddy thought that if someone discovered the switch mechanism by accident, they'd see the lid pop up and find the secret stairway, so Daddy made the lid close if nobody was manning the switch. I wish I had a brain like Daddy's. <laughs> Are you sure you have it? Having what? Never mind. <coughs> Would you mind operating the, the, the switch there so I can peek inside? Alright. There you are. Oh, you sure there's a stairway down here, miss? I mean, all, all I see is this, the floor of the window, see here. Well, naturally, you only see the floor right now, Constable, but here, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Microsoft's child at the time. Good, then let's go to the start of the second floor slot on Sudbury Lane. Whatever for? To ask the man with measles the fact about father. Mm. And I won't say that three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? That's smart. Whatever did you do to me? He was taping your wrist, Miss 
<laughs> Why? It, it's the thing to do with a person who's fainted. I have no idea. Uh, Inspector, may I please have one of those before you finish everything off? Oh, sorry. Hey, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I needed that. Don't you need those? Whatever. But really, it gave me an awful turn. Inspector Crandall? Yes, Mr. Draper. Why? I, I don't follow that. Why what? Why did it give you an awful turn to see Andrew Hollister? Because, because, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> I think, Barry, what do you mean? Well, if I were to walk into a man's home and see the man of the house standing in front of me, I don't think I would go into a sh sudden shock. As a matter of fact, that's just what I did, and I did it. <laughs> did come in and didn't go into shock. I must apologize. I can't tell you why I reacted that way. If you must know, I already convinced myself that Edgar Hollister was dead, murdered by a person or person that never. So naturally, when I saw him. Yes, of course, that makes splendid sense. I suppose it might have that effect on a person. Might. What if your own fiance? Didn't she fake too? Maybe she's probably calling it. That's a shock, and I had only a suspicion that Daddy had no foul play. But what about Mrs. Hollister? <clears throat> Moaning, pacing, screaming, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh -huh. and then flopping unconscious like a heap of whipple. Nonsense. I was waiting by the phone for a word from Susan. I must have fallen asleep on the floor. <laughs> Is there somebody still on the lawn? Hello? Reverend Smithers, how are you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What woman? She said that to you? Yes, it must have been a shock. Said what? What woman? Shh. No, not you, Reverend. What? Well, yes, she was right about that. We decided to hold the wedding off until Susan's father was available for it. But he is, darling, he is. We saw him here just a moment ago. Miss Hollister, I hardly know how to tell you this, but do you know it may not have been your father whom you saw? Yes, we'll surely let you know soon what we decide. It would be a shame to keep you waiting by the phone all night. Thank you. Give my love to the bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> not to my father, Inspector, but I certainly know my own father when I see him. But the star, you may have been mistaken. So why would anyone want to uh, pretend to be Mr. Hollister? But that's just what we don't know, and therefore, until we do, I'm afraid I shall have to take Susan into protective custody. But we don't know that the imposter is dangerous. And we don't know that he isn't. We don't even know that he's an imposter. And if it is her father, what is she to fear? But that's just the point. Edgar, remember, was about to make an alteration to his will. If it is Edgar, do any of us really know how safe that is for Susan? Daddy would never harm a hair of my pretty little head. No, of course he wouldn't. Nonetheless, it's better to be safe than sad. Sorry for what? Sad. <laughs> sad. <laughs> Why not do so? 
Naturally. That's what I say. That's what you said. And so did I. <laughs> There's two of us. What does? That. About uh, the chaperone by whom? Why, by Mrs. Hollister, of course. Oh, I should adore that. Where else could Susan be safer than with me? I'll just go change it to something more suitable for a shepherd. And I shall bring the car around here to the front door. Uh, well, Miss Susan, perhaps I should make you something to eat first. The journey is a maybe long and tiresome. Oh, there's no need, I'm happy to say. It's not far at all. Well, then you know where the inspector lives. Yes, we've all just come from there, one of our bungling amateur attempts to solve this case. <laughs> and where is it? It's a lovely little second floor flat on Sunday. <laughs> You were afraid that you didn't understand when I said that 
Master Edgar wore the false hair and mustache in order to encourage Miss Templeton rather than the reverse. Yes, why should such a get up and press her favorably? Well, because they made him seem an older man. And to his way of thinking, a fortune hunting woman would be drawn to a man who didn't seem to have that many years left. Yes, yes, I can see why it might appeal to her. But well, really now, if he thought she was a fortune hunter, why do the very thing to win her? Why not ask his own age to severely disappoint her ambitions? It was her legs, sir. Her legs? <laughs> Shapely, he called them. He was quite taken by them. Even if she were a fortune hunter, he didn't have the heart to let Goldo's legs. <laughs> <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> Wait, I'm beginning to see, and it's very interesting. You know, Lottie, you may just solve this entire mystery. Oh, come <laughs> on with you, sir. How, what are you talking about? How could what I have said have solved the mystery? Don't you see, Lottie? Hey, Lady. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
by Wood Cottage. I'm the housekeeper, and I was wondering if you could help uh, clarify an item on our telephone bill. Yes, well, there's a number that I don't recognize that's been called quite frequently since last Friday morning. Yes, yes, that's the one. Could you tell me who it belongs to? Oh, what a pity. What's the matter? It's unlisted. Well, could you at least tell me what address that number corresponds to? What? Are you sure? Oh, oh my stars. Oh, Master Mary. What is it? I forgot to say thank you to the operator. <laughs> <laughs> the operator, what's the address? It's a lovely little second floor flat on Sudbury Lane. Inspector <laughs> Crandall's, but Susan is there. So is Mavis. Well, that's two against one. Not if we get there in time. Come on, there's not a moment to lose. Where are we going? Well, my bicycle's out back, and you can steer and uh, pedal, and I, I'll ride the handlebars. <laughs>
means a denomination of money. It also means a denomination <coughs> of weight. What? Weight? <coughs> yes, you fools. My wood cottage stands upon my estate. I had an agricultural engineer estimate the tonnage of its topsoil week before last. It came to several thousands of pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Curses! We've been tricked! But why? Edgar, how could you have known in time to trick us? Inspector Crandall confided in me that he had an amorous attachment to a certain man's bride to be only last Tuesday. The very next day, chancing to glance into the window of a little tea shop, I saw her with him and discerned at once that she was my very own mates. Bosh and bolder dash! I never would have confided such a thing to you! Ah, but you did not know it was to me who you were confiding in. Because at the time, I was impersonating a man known to you as... Constable Howard! <laughs> it is Constable Howard! You lied to me! You said you were my daddy! <laughs> yes, he lied. You can't trust him, but you can trust me. So, give me that pistol. Like a good girl. Oh, There's a Susan, girl. don't do it! Oh, but I did do it! Now you've done it? And now you're done for. Oh, what have I done? You have undone us, that's what you have done. She has done you down, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you have done the oh, Wait. Well, I'm waiting. Why are you waiting? To hear what he has to say. Oh, very well. I suppose even Edgar is entitled to a few last words. Thank you. Oh, I say, did you say Edgar? Of course she did. <laughs> you little numbskull, he's been your father all alone. Oh, Ninny, I've been such a daddy. Or something. Yeah, no, don't regret yourself, Susan. You could not have known the truth. But what is the truth? How can you be my daddy and Constable Howard both? It's really quite simple, Susan. How would you know? At the moment I knew that pistol was loaded with blanks, I figured the whole thing out. And you didn't tell me. But there wasn't time. Uh, oh, but there is plenty of time now. So do you tell us? Is this a stall for time? Uh, no, it is not. Naturally not. But that's precisely what you would say if it were a stall for time. <laughs> but still, it's what they'd also say if it weren't. That's true. <laughs> so please, do you explain and help me understand about everything. And that could take years. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't mean everything. Just about the mystery. Oh, very well. I suppose we may as well. To begin at the beginning, I told Constable Howard that I was an amateur of Mavis. Not knowing that Constable Howard and I are the same man. Because Edgar has always been ashamed of being a police constable. So I walked on the force under an assumed name and used a fake Australian accent. But on the night <laughs> when I first shot him. And phoned me to help her hide the corpse. When I fell and pretended to be killed, I struck my head. Knocking himself so unconscious that Mavis and I took him for dead. And stashed him in the murder room and nailed it shut. But when I awakened there, I had partial amnesia. And thought himself to be Constable Howard only. Completely forgetting the Edgar part of his identity. So I tried to solve my own murder. <laughs> <laughs> when Susan dropped me down the stairway on my head. Ah, then that was you who found the house here as your real self. Completely terrifying me. <laughs> and I did not the pistol to ballistics. Because you knew all along the pistol was loaded with blank cartridges. Because you knew that I might try to use it upon you. And what you did, after failing to feed me the poisoned cocoa. Some of which I also failed to feed to Susan earlier tonight. And when I knew you were investigating my flat. He put up the measles sign. But Betty had already had measles. So he rushed over there to the office. And saw that there wasn't a single measles on your face. He began to suspect you at once, but then forgot what. And now it is quite too late. Whatever Barry may suspect. Because we are going to murder <coughs> two of you and get it right this time. There now, Susan, do you understand? Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind telling it again? I should mind exceedingly. Oh, Daddy, must we let them do us in, must we? I <laughs> really don't see how we can prevent them from doing so, dear yes, Doctor. But there must be a way, there simply must. Well, there's not. Oh, but there could be. Could it? Could. Such as? <laughs> Help arrive in the last crucial moment. You've been watching far too many American films. Yes, in real life, the cavalry never shows up on time. Now, be quick about it, you two. I say, where are you taking us? To the quarry. A few 
few gunshots, some rocks tied to your feet, and a lovely splash, and it's all over. <laughs> but why? I have told you there is no money to be gained by this. True or not, we have gone too far to turn back now. Come alone. Perhaps we should go to the Susan. Yes, I expect so, but oh, the women so lovely, the cavalry had shown up. <laughs> Anything, you two. Well, what shall we do, James? We can't let them all into the car. <laughs> Very well. Then we'll take both cars. No, no, that won't work. You need one person to drive and one to hold the gun. By Joe, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot them all now and then take them to the quarry. Thanks a lot, Susan. You're welcome, darling. I shall tell all of you and put them against the wall so that James can shoot you. <coughs> wait, wait, uh, I suppose that you will want to start with the youngest. <laughs> oh, no, they should really begin with the oldest. In any case, ladies first. <laughs> Shame on all of you. At least we could die with brave smiles upon our lips. Daddy's right. Did you say daddy? But that's Constable Howard. That was just my name on the post. He's actually my father. I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. And I, you You seem like a fine young and standing man. But you won't be standing up much longer. James, would you get on with it? Wait! <laughs> Can somebody please explain to me why we're being murdered by the inspector of police? Yes, that would be the decent thing to do after all. <laughs> Damn it, Glass, we've just been through all of that. <laughs> oh, but please tell us again. Perhaps this time I may be able to grasp matters. You tell them, darling. If I have to hear it once again, I shall go mad. But there is one bit of information I should like to have. What is that, Mavis? Susan mentioned another entrance into the murder room. I can't imagine where such an entrance would be. Where is it? Oh, it's right in front Susan, show them. But, Daddy, darling, why should I not simply say where it is? Because actions speak louder than words. Ah, oh, yes, of course. And here I nearly simply spoke out and said Susan, that show them. <laughs> show them. Yes, show us. I'd like to see myself. Lost. What's the matter? Nothing, darling, nothing. It's part of what you must do is indecent for a young lady. And I can't have you doing it with Inspector Crandall looking at you. Oh, certainly not. I do beg your pardon. <laughs> now, show them, Susan. Yes, would you please get on with it? <coughs> no. What? Susan, do you mean you won't show them? Not if it's something indecent. I, I didn't realize it. I still have some white hair. But if I am to die, I must at least die like a little lady. It's not indecent. I just made that part up. In that case, may I watch? Uh, no, you mustn't. Uh, it really is indecent. I, I just said it wasn't, so Susan would go through with it. Oh, I see. <laughs> but Daddy said it was indecent. Must I lie? Then may I watch? Oh, damn it! I have an idea. Why doesn't Susan do whatever it is, and I will watch, and James won't, and afterwards I'll let her know whether or not it was indecent. Well, that's very decent of you. No, no. <laughs> I say whether or not that's decent of Susan. But only if it is. Yes, yes, of course. Promise. Yes, I promise. Now, would you please get on with it? Oh, very well. First, I put my left foot here behind the umbrella stand, and then I grab <coughs> hold of this particular prong on the cobra, yes. and then I pull the prong down and so it opens. Well, 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 I think that's all of it. Susan, aren't you going to show up? Oh, yes, of course. Ah! Ah! 
mad man. I didn't mean that kind of madness. I did. But surely you can't be mad at me. Can so. Can. Can. But why? Because it was you who got me into this mess in the first place. Relying me with your reptilian charm. Talking me out of love for a decent man like Edgar, who's actually young and handsome under his wig and false moustache. <laughs> Just my type, making me marry for money when I could have married for love. Forcing me to almost committing a murder, getting me into all sorts of trouble with the law, and now quietly expecting me to take your part in this miniature massacre. Ha! Mavis, what do you intend to do? I intend to shoot you all, close up Pinewood Cottage, and move somewhere where I can lead a decent, normal life. Impossible! And why do you say so? After murdering five people, no one could lead a decent, normal life. Yes, it would be a terrible weight upon conscience. You'd live a life of remorse and regret. Really? Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, but aren't we all forgetting something? What, my dear? A murderer has no conscience. But Josie's right! <laughs> <laughs> and that's a lot, Susan! <laughs> I, I say, Vince, uh, before you shoot us, uh, may I do something? Well, what is it? May I put the lamp back on the table? Why? It looks so sloppy upon the sofa. Well, I suppose so. <laughs> Don't let him do it! Why not? It may be a trick! Inspector, whose side are you on anyhow? Oh, that's it all! <laughs> I completely forgot. Mavis, darling, I was wrong. It's not a trick. Let him go ahead. That's better. Oh, Daddy, I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> disappointed in me? Whatever for? For not playing a trick on her. Susan, <laughs> I tell you that I am going to play a trick on her. Oh, Daddy, that would be jolly fun. <laughs> I don't intend to put it within any trickery. Let that down below. Very well. I don't care anymore. Go ahead and shoot. It is a shame, though. What is? That once you shoot me, you will never find the secret safe with all the emeralds in it. The <laughs> secret safe? Emeralds? In it? You're bluffing. Uh, there is no such safe. Of course. Go ahead and shoot. Oh, damn you. Where is the secret safe? Well, it's very hard to open, and I made it that way on purpose. Well, yes, it would be stupid to make a secret safe that was easy to open. <laughs> Stop this chit-chat and open that safe. I want to see those emeralds. Very well. Uh, Susan, will you please put the lamp back on the table? Uh, Barrett, will you please sit into the couch? Uh, Lottie, dear, would you please sit in the armchair? And Spectre, will you please go to the corner and pick up the potted philodendron? <laughs> Now, if Mavis will permit me, I shall open the safe. Hold on, I don't completely trust you. Just where exactly is the secret safe? In the most logical place in the room. Behind the portrait of my late wife. When I trigger the mechanism, the portrait will slide down, exposing the safe to view. Very well then, Edgar. Do so. Thank you. Susan, my dear, would you please lift the lamp and hold it above the surface exactly two inches? And now what, Daddy, darling? When I give the signal, I want you to put the lamp down. Barry to stand up, Lottie to push the button on the arm of the chair, and the inspector to drop the philodendron. <laughs> Do you understand? Right, <laughs> Very well. On your marks. It's set. Now. <laughs> Daddy doesn't know anybody in town, and he'll be the best man. 
Man's awfully decent of you, Crandall, but of course will not use your father-in-law allow it. Of course I will. He seems like a reformed man. <laughs> Obviously, now that Mavis has turned on him and shown her true colors, he shall have no reason to try to kill me anymore. <laughs> and I dare say I, I shall be safe in permitting him to go off with you and, and take part in. But thou shalt be departed. <laughs> <laughs> We're alone at last. Our plan worked perfectly. Plan? What plan? Mavis, what are you talking about? Our plan to get my lover to give us the gate so that you and I could live happily ever after. Hold up. Are you telling me that you are not a murderess? A woman who I should have turned into the police station and locked up for trial. And then later on, <laughs> public execution. Yes, that's what I'm telling you. With the gun, you fired it at me. And the cyanide in the cocoa? That wasn't real cyanide. The cat died. And that was a stuffed cat, not a real one. <laughs> <laughs> you just weren't here when Constable Howard brought it around. Dash it all, I am Constable Howard. But of course you are, my dear. With that nasty old advocacy, I made you forget the whole thing. By Jove, you're right. I forgot about my amnesia. Amnesia makes it easy to forget. <laughs> but you say. This was planned between us, you and me, yes? Yes, of course it was. But uh, that amnesia made you think that your loving, adoring wife was a mean old murderess. Oh, can you ever forgive me, my darling? Uh, so, so silly of me to be so forgetful. But of course I can, my dear. Now, how about a nice hot cup of cocoa? Oh, don't <laughs> mind if I do. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps with a dash of brandy in it. That is, if you don't mind putting a little something extra. Believe me, darling, nothing would make me happier. <laughs> I'll just be about it. A wonderful woman, Mavis. One in a million. So lucky to have found her. Here you are, my dear. So sorry to take so long. Oh, uh, well, with we'll the wait, I'm sure. Mm. You certainly can cook a cooking cup of cocoa. I bet you can't say that three times. <laughs> no, no, my dear. You'll bet I can't say that three times fast. No, no, dearest. I'll bet you can't say it three times, period. Of course I can. You certainly can cook a cooking good cup of cocoa. You certainly can cook a cooking good cup of cocoa. You certainly can... Can cook it. Oh, Tasha! <laughs> <laughs>